Here's some of the things that you need to know about the Samsung 9100 Pro. This is an NVMe SSD, which is Gen 5, offers over 14,000 megabytes a second read speed and over 13,000 megabytes a second write speed. It comes with this heatsink variant, which I would recommend getting. And one of the things Samsung boasts about is how it's slimmer than something like the Crucial T700, which you can see here has a large tall heatsink, which can be a problem, meaning you can't install it in small form factor things and even with this heatsink the samsung 9100 pro will apparently fit into the playstation 5 that's not something i'm able to test but what i can show you is it does fit nicely on a modern motherboard with a pcie gen 5 nvme slot like this gigabyte one that i'm using here it's small and compact and delivers good performance with some caveats that I want to get to as we go into this video. You can see it here in the Be Quiet Lightbase 600 LX, which I've crafted in recently. Now, I was running this as the main operating system drive, and I've done some testing with it as well, benchmarking with Crystal Dismark and other tools that I'll show you in a second. One of the things I did find, though, is that with it as the operating system and with benchmarking and recording at the same time, I was getting some pretty hot temperatures. You can see here that it maxed out at 94 degrees C at one point, 83 degrees in other instances as well, and it was getting pretty hot. Now, this is troubling because according to the specifications, its non-operating temperature is minus 40 degrees C and up to 85 degrees C. So you can see the maximum operating temperature is actually 70 degrees. So you're going to find some thermal throttling if it does get hot. And this is why I'd recommend using the heatsink variant. Now, it does work with Samsung Magician software as well. And you can see here when doing the benchmark that I'm not getting that great read speed. But that's because I'm also downloading Stalk 2 at the same time. Obviously, being the main operating drive, doing a lot of different things on it and testing and gaming and downloading files and moving things around. There's a lot happening on that drive. So doing all those things can have some interesting results. Now, one of the things that I thought it would be worth doing is to show you the difference between a standard 2.5 inch SATA drive and the Samsung drive. So we put Windows on that SATA drive and then do from a cold start, booting it up, see how long it takes to get into Windows and then repeat the same process with the Samsung drive with clean install of Windows and a really reasonable boot time. Now, this is the default settings of the BIOS out of the box, a standard motherboard setup, so it's just crafted booting it up, see it took 22 seconds with a standard SATA drive. Now, unplugging those drives, removing them entirely from the connection so they're not connected to the PC anymore, and then putting the 9100 Pro into the system, obviously with a Windows installation already on it, so it's the only drive in the system now, and then repeating the process of basically booting up from cold as well with the same settings on it, so you can show you the difference that that'll make. Now, there are various different impacts this drive's gonna have, obviously, in terms of loading games more quickly, hopefully reducing your Windows boot times and just in generally improving the file transfer speeds and things as well. These things are ridiculously fast when compared to SATA drives, much quicker. You can see it hasn't made that much difference to Windows boot time, though it's only 19 seconds, but maybe some fast boot settings and other tweaks might improve that. So it's one of the impacts, a small one there, but it can make big difference in other places. Quickly, I want to note an issue I had in another system, which is actually related to the placement of a graphics card. So I'm using a 5090 in this Haven build that I did. If you're using a vertical mount, I wanted to point this out as a potential impact that it could have if you choose to use the Samsung 9100 Pro without a heatsink. Because one of the things, obviously, is this GPU is chucking out a lot of heat and it's pushing it towards the motherboard. In this PC, I was using a crucial Gen 5 NVMe SSD, which overheated. The GPU was causing the motherboard to heat up, and when the drive was running at our top speeds, it ended up overheating, thermal throttling, shutting down, and then finding that the drive was no longer accessible from Windows, which is obviously not ideal. Now, this is the crucial drive without the heat shield, it's worth noting. And it was sitting right behind the graphics card underneath the motherboard heat shielding. Unfortunately, I've not been able to test to see whether the same issue would happen with the Samsung 9100 Pro. But my point here is the heat shield variant is worth getting because Gen 5 drives can run particularly hot. If you're doing a lot of things on your system, gaming, recording, transferring files, and you've got a vertical GPU mounted in there as well, maybe you've got a smaller case, the airflow is not as good, could cause problems, drive getting too hot, Maybe it just stops working or the speeds aren't as good as they should be, which is something to think about. 
that said, I've not had that problem with this system, with obviously playing at 4K with the setup here, but it's not a 5090 in this instance. It's a standard mounted horizontal GPU and it's the Intel B580, so it's not chucking out as much heat, so it's not the same test. But this case, as you can see, has only got three intake fans in it and still running games and the operating system off the Samsung drive hasn't been an issue and recording footage, so no real problems there from what I can see. Games also load nice and quickly. If you're getting this drive, I'd also recommend making sure that you've got a motherboard that will support it so you can get maximum speed out of it. Make sure you've got a motherboard that supports PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSDs, and you can also check to make sure it's running at the right speed when you set it up and put it in. By using Hardware Info 64, if you go under the drive section, what you want to look for is a drive controller. Make sure the settings show that it's PCIe X4, 32 gigabytes a second, and also you can go in there and you can check the PCIe Express version and see it's running at Gen 5. If it isn't, it might be a motherboard setting in the BIOS that's holding you back. As I've shown, you can also use Crystal Disk Mark and Samsung Magician to benchmark your driver, make sure it's running at the right speed. And I would recommend doing this because it does test these things out nicely, check both the speeds and the temperatures. So you can see I'm getting 14,000 megabytes per second read speed here. And you can also note at the temp here, maximum of 82 degrees in this instance. So not quite as hot as it was earlier on, but it does depend on what you're doing. Because I have found, for example, that if I'm recording, so if I take OBS, so I can record footage of this happening directly on the machine and then run the test again, that it does obviously crank up the temperatures. The more you're doing and your environmental things and other issues like that could cause the drive to run hot and you might find that the performance is then throttled and the speeds aren't as good. Now, obviously, you're not going to just be running benchmarks all the time. You will be transferring files. But if you do find that when you're doing things, file transfers are slowing down, it could just be that the drive's getting a little bit toasty. So it's worth using these tools to check and see what the performance is like and maybe think about the cooling in your case. So the next thing I wanted to test and show you is the difference that it can make with the load times of games. So launching a game from start and then seeing how long it takes to get to the menu and also loading save files once you get in there because that's obviously going to be some of the difference. There'll be a lot of different things that happen. Faster loading of game files might help with better response from games in various different ways. But loading games is obviously an important part of that. Obviously the initial load though is going to be affected by some of the title screens. But as you can see here, the Samsung Drive reached the menu by 29.45, which I thought was pretty decent. So then I did it on my main machine, the same test. And my daily driver, this is with a Crucial P5 Plus, which is a Gen 4 drive. So in theory, it should be half as fast and will take a little bit longer in order to load the initial menu. Obviously, as mentioned, you have to wait for these title screens, though. So this won't make as big a difference as it would if you're loading between maps in a game where you have to wait for load screens there. Or if you're loading save files from a game, you might see a significant difference. But here we're looking at 26 seconds. Surprisingly, this is actually a few seconds faster, which was strange. And I wasn't expecting this to occur. But obviously, there are differences in the specs of the two machines. So it's worth taking that into account but something curious. So instead of doing that, what I wanted to do was see how long it took if you just click continue. So be at the main menu and then click continue, which is obviously loading the most recent save file. So back to the Samsung drive, click continue and see how long it takes to load that up. And then when I get in there, I'm going to show you then how fast it is loading a previous save as well, just so we can see the difference. So we can see here what we get out of it and that is roughly around 23 seconds which is not too bad and then as mentioned so now what I want to do is click the load file and then load a previous save from a while ago and click and see how long that takes these sorts of loads waiting for a game to load especially if you're quick saving regularly makes a big difference if it's shorter and that was just six seconds in this instance. So now the same process, but on the Crucial P5 Plus. Now, my games are installed on a separate drive from the OS drive, is worth noting, in this machine. So this is a game that's on a separate drive on that Gen 4 drive, rather than being on my operating system. And obviously, this is Gen 4 versus Gen 5. But I wanted to show you what difference there might be between these two, if any, in that instance. And it's pretty interesting, I think, because what you'll see here 
is there's quite a bit of a difference in the load times now. We're looking at quite a significant load increase here. So just clicking continue, it's 35 seconds. So it was faster with the Samsung Drive to do that continue and then load the same save file that I did before, waiting for this previous load to load up. And you can see that it was six seconds before with the Samsung Drive, and now we're looking at nearly nine seconds. So there has been a decrease in the speed there with the Gen 5 Drive, perhaps making it worthwhile just shaving a few extra seconds off your game load times. So hopefully this has given you some interesting insights into the Samsung 9100 Pro. This has been the Provoke Pro on. Thanks very much for watching. Check out the links in the description to see more related videos that you might find interesting. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.